I've got a spring here. This is a spring like you might buy at the hardware store to, to keep your screen door shut or something like that. It's just a big long spring. And what we're going to do first is we're going to figure out what the K constant is for this spring. So I'm going to take a one kilogram mass and I'm going to hang it and I'm going to set it into oscillation. Okay, and uh, let's measure the time it takes. 20 is a little long. Let's just do it for 10. So I'm going to take out my phone here and pull up the stopwatch app. On your mark, get set, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Seven point eight seconds. Okay. So the period would be seven point eight divided by ten. So that's point seven eight seconds. Okay. So now let's take that and plug it into our equation or period uh, for a spring that says uh, t is equal to 2 pi times the square root of m over k. I have strategically used a 1 kilogram mass to make this uh, calculation pretty simple. 2 pi times the square root of 1 over k equals 0.78. So that means my k constant then 66 newtons per meter. Okay, so that's my K constant of the spring. So now let's predict if I take a second one kilogram mass and I hang it on the spring, what will the new period be? So let's see if we can do that. T equals 2 pi square root of M over K. We I uh, said we're going to use two, two kilograms now, so that's two, and I just found out that my K constant is 66, so I'll put that in there. That's going to be 1.09 seconds. Let's test it. Okay, so I'm going to put my second kilogram on there. Now there's two kilograms. I'm going to reset my stopwatch. On your mark, get set, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha! <laughs> ten point nine divided by ten, one point zero nine. Yes. Okay? So it works. All right. Now, we've confirmed that. Our equation is good. We've confirmed that everything works the way we expect it to. Let's use it now for a different purpose. Let's say we, we know the K constant of the spring now. We can measure the period so we can figure out how much mass is hanging there. I know that's two kilograms, but if I had measured this and used my K constant now that I know it, I could have solved for m, and I would have gotten 2, right? And I would know how much mass is there. So let's use this to figure out the mass of something that we don't know the mass of. What do I have that we don't know the mass of? Well, how about <coughs> this bowling ball? Okay, so I'm going to attach. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to set it in oscillation. Doesn't matter if I have a big oscillation or a small oscillation, is that going to change the period of the oscillation? No, the answer is it's not. You can see over here, if I have a small oscillation, or a big oscillation, It's still the same, okay? What changes it, for a pendulum anyway, is the length of the string. There, now I've got a different period of oscillation, okay? So as long as the length of the string stays the same, it doesn't matter if it's a small or a little bit bigger. Now, 
within reason, right, if I swing this thing from 90 degrees to 90 degrees, it's, it's not going to quite come out the same. Uh, we're going to learn more about that later this week. But the, the, the size of the oscillation isn't really going to matter. So when I set this bowling ball into oscillation, there we go. It's going. And I'm going to start it. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. Twenty point four. So T10 equals 20.4. So T then is 2.04 seconds. Okay? So that is our period. So now let's take our equation. T equals 2 pi square root of M over K. And I'm going to solve that for M. So this is going to go to the other side. And, it, and I'm going to square both sides. So t squared over 4 pi squared. Everyone knows that, right? When you square 2 pi, you get 4 pi squared. Not 4 pi, be careful. Equals m over k. But then the k is going to come over here. So there it is. All right. So let's plug those numbers in. Our k constant was 66. Our uh, period is 2.04 and 4 pi squared. Okay, so it's about 7.1 kilograms. You multiply that by what? Anyone know? What's the conversion for kilograms to pounds? 2.2. .2. So multiply that by 2.2, .2, and that gives me about 15 and a half pounds. Any bowlers in here? A 15-pound bowling ball, is that about right? Yeah. Bowling balls, you know, the little kids, they use 8-pound bowling balls. The professional bowlers, 16-pound bowling balls. So this is, uh, well, of course, it's closer to professional size because it's mine. But <laughs> I don't bowl. Okay? So kind of a cool experiment. Uh, is there another way? Can you think of another way we could have measured the weight of the bowling ball with this spring, other than measuring the period. Let's go. If I have a spring, and I know the spring constant, and I hang a weight from it, how do I quickly determine how much weight is hung on the spring? Hooke's law, which means I'm going to measure what? Here, we'll write Hooke's law on the board. Since you said the, the words Hooke's Law. Okay, so the force, that's the weight of the ball, right? And it's going to stretch the spring this amount, and this is the K constant of the spring, right? So I just, I, we know what the K constant is, it's 66. So if I'm trying to find F, what do I have to measure? X. What is X? Displacement of the spring, the stretch of the spring, okay? So that's really the, the easier way. You just, and if you go to the grocery store, you know, and you buy a bag of apples and you want to know how much they weigh, do they still have those in the grocery store? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The scales, right? You put it in there, inside is a spring. It might not be a, a, this kind of spring, it might be a coil spring, whatever. It's a spring. And it stretches a certain amount. And then based on the K constant, you can... So, so let's figure out how much stretch should be in this spring right now. Uh, the force we said was 7.1. Uh, 7.1, but that's kilograms. So force is in newtons. So how do I convert that to newtons? Multiplied by 9.8, right? The negative sign, remember, is just if the stretch is down, the force is up. It's just, so let's not worry about this, that. So K is what, uh, oops, I'm sorry. K 
is 66. Okay, so let's get out our calculator divided by 66. 1.05. What are the units of that? Meters, right? If you work in SI units all the time, so you're always going to have kilograms, meters, seconds. Okay. So that means this thing should be stretched right now one meter and five centimeters. So may I have your assistance, please, sir? I'm going to... If you just... Uh, we're going to do this very high tech. Just stand right here and, and just... Hold your finger right there. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Now don't move. Okay. There's. And an additional, how much is that? Uh, about six. Six, six or seven centimeters. Thank you very much. So we're off by two centimeters and over a meter of measurement. So that's less than 2% error. So that's pretty good. Okay. All right. So if we had just measured that stretch, 66 times 1.05 would have told us the weight of the bowling ball straight off, okay? So the oscillation thing is another way of doing it. Stretching it and measuring the stretch certainly is the easier way of doing it. But let me ask you this. What if you were on the International Space Station, like so many of you will be in your future lives? Because, okay? Or maybe you'll be living on Mars, I don't know. Can I perform this experiment right here in the International Space Station? No. No. Could I ex perform this experiment on the International Space Station? No. Hmm. Not quite, right? There's no gravity to pull it down, okay? But this spring is a little different than a lot of the springs we talk about uh, in the textbook problems and in a lot of the problems that we do. This spring right here only stretches. It doesn't compress, okay? But there are some springs uh, that do compress. Uh, here's, here's one that I can think of, right? You know this spring in here, in this pen? It both stretches and compresses, doesn't it? In fact, that's what, when I put the, the ballpoint pen out, the spring is compressed, and when I release it, that's what pushes it back up into the pen, right, is that spring. It, it can both stretch and compress. Or if you go to the, the playground and you see those little animals that just sit on, you know, right? Those springs, they both stretch and compress. Or in the shock absorber of your car, those springs both stretch and compress. So if we had a spring like that on the International Space Station and I pulled it back, I attach a, a mass to it, and I pull it back and I let it go and it goes boing, 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 boing. right? Now we're doing the 2 pi m over k experiment and we can measure the mass of the object even though we're in a weightless environment and we can't perform that experiment uh, just by hanging it. So let's check it out. Hello, Jeff Williams on board the International Space Station. We often get the question, how do we weigh ourselves in space? If you know the properties of a spring, uh, then you can measure the mass. Um, and it's a, it's a very simple problem of physics. And that's what we use here. We have this machine here that's got a, a known spring constant. And we've got it set up here. And I'm going to release it. And it's, you're going to see it's going to oscillate at some frequency here. And we're going to go through a calibration. It's going to release. You see it's got a very predictable frequency here, and it's calibrating itself now. And we have an electronic unit over here that uh, gives a readout of the weight, and right now, like I said, it's uh, calibrated. So I'm going to reset it, and we're going to change it to the working mode to measure the body mass. I'm going to get on it. And now since we've got my mass on it, the frequency is going to be much less than it was during the calibration. And, and then we'll take that frequency, the known spring test, and calculate my mass. So here we go. And 
and after about four calculations, we have a readout. 81 kilograms. A little more than that. 81 and a half kilograms.